How did the idea of hand washing come about? We'll learn that and more on this week's episode of The Internet Says It's True. Hey. Well, hey there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Internet Says It's True, where every week we learn something that sounds like I made it up, but it's really true. Part of the WCBE podcast experience. My name is Michael Kent. This is episode 161. It's a story about a visionary who was not taken seriously in his time. It's been a fun week of shows out on the road. This week, I have the week off from touring, but then we continue in Tyler, Texas next week. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can see me in Cleveland, Ohio on November 3rd at the Music Box Supper Club. They have those tickets for sale on their website. That's musicboxcle.com. It would be pretty great to show up for a gig and see you there. So go ahead and get those tickets now. They're on sale. Also, please take a moment and join the Patreon. I am once again asking your financial support it is the best way to show your support for this podcast it's the only way you can see bonus content like the guest quiz videos and joke story trick episodes you can join with a free trial if you want and after that you can pledge as much or as little as you'd like right down to only a dollar a month once again it's patreon.com slash michael kent become a tizzler today so with all of that said let's get into this week's episode As I was traveling back from Pennsylvania last week, I stopped at a gas station to get a snack and to use the restroom. And the guy in the urinal walked out of the bathroom without washing his hands. I might not have cared that much if he just left the gas station, but he stayed there to shop and he's picking up random items here and there. And so I skipped my plan to get snacks until the next stop. Thoroughly grossed out. By now, we all know just we should just wash our hands. Everybody knows that. Every public restroom at a store or restaurant has a a mandated sign that their employees must wash their hands and hospitals have entire rooms dedicated to scrubbing in before surgery. But it wasn't always that way. Our story will talk about how it all began and growing pains associated with new scientific and medical discoveries. But first, a few interesting facts about hygiene. These are statistics from the CDC. Here's one. Out of the 7.8 billion people in the world, as many as 2.3 billion don't practice proper hygiene like hand washing with soap and water and many of those are because of the lack of access to soap and clean water another one washing hands with soap and water can reduce deaths from diarrheal disease by up to 50 percent if everyone washed their hands properly as many as 1 million deaths a year could be prevented another one when it comes to respiratory illnesses like the common cold hand washing could reduce the chance of catching cold by 16 to 21 percent And then finally, here's the last one I found. A large percentage of foodborne illnesses and food-related disease outbreaks are spread by unwashed hands. That one we probably could have guessed. So experts suggest that when you wash your hands, you should use hot water and soap and rub your soapy hands together for at least 20 seconds. An easy way to time that is by singing happy birthday to yourself while washing your hands. The World Health Organization spoke out to advocate for vigorous hand washing during the COVID-19 pandemic as an effective way to help fight the spread of the virus. They made press releases and statements to promote October 15 as Global Handwashing Day. So that's coming up. So, you know, buy your party favors. Handwashing wasn't always accepted as a way to prevent disease. And while physicians and doctors have been washing their hands as part of hygiene since the 1880s, the CDC didn't even start publishing handwashing guidelines until the 1980s. It's just one of many medical breakthroughs that were originally rejected. When the first vaccine was invented by Edward Jenner, it was met with criticism and ridicule. The church called it unchristian. Many parents claimed that mandatory vaccines were an assault on their personal freedom. Today, something like 4 million childhood deaths are prevented every year because of vaccination. It's a good thing we've come a long way and no longer see people fighting vaccines because of religion or personal freedom, right? Moving on, the idea of genetics and the fact that we can inherit traits from our parents was an idea that Gregor Mendel first put forth in the 1850s. Nobody believed him. Nobody read his works, and it wasn't until 30 years later that his theories were accepted. And hand-washing has a similar story. We'll talk about it after a quick break. 
We're living through the most dynamic time in human history, and what we do as leaders matter. We are the ones that create the leverage to shift directions of our companies, our nonprofits, and our communities. As a leader or an emerging leader, please join me for a dynamic conversation with top thought leaders, academics, and executives to learn more about how to elevate your leadership. I'm Maureen Metcalf. Join us at the WCBE podcast experience at wcbe.org. If you love listening to this podcast every week and you want to show your support, that would mean a great deal to me. You can do that by becoming a Patreon member. We've got members at all levels, whether you want to pledge $1 a month or $10 a month. Just think about the value that you receive from this show. And if you like the histories and the stories that you learn about or the jokes that you hear, and if you think that they're worth it, consider signing up. For that, you get every episode ad-free and a week early, access to bonuses like the unedited videos of the guest appearances, and 20% off all merchandise. You can sign up today at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. That's patreon.com slash Michael Kent. Hi, this is Sue Foley, and I'm inviting you to listen to Music Journeys. Here, local and national artists share how the love of music began and what inspired their latest project. Mike Foley blends it all together with some music. Now, you can't believe him if he says he's related to me and inherited my musical talent, but you can be sure that other Foley will deliver a worthwhile listening experience, too. Listen to Music Journeys Saturday mornings at 1130 on WCBE and in the podcast experience at WCBE. CBE.org. There was a time that humans used 100% organic products as healing balms and moisturizers for their skin. Well, I've partnered with an awesome company that wants to get back to those times. Fatco sells organic and responsibly made tallow based skincare products. For centuries, humans used tallow in skin moisturizers and healing balms, but unfortunately, the topical application of these fats seemed to stop around the same time that animal fats stopped being considered part of a healthy diet. A lot of modern skincare products do more harm than good by stripping your skin of its natural oils. Let's change that. You can try them out now at fatco.com and get 15% off your order by using my promo code INTERNET. Go to the internet says it's true.com slash deals for the link. Ignaz Semmelweis was born in Hungary in 1818. He graduated from medical school and began working in Vienna General Hospital's maternity clinic in 1846. After working there for a few years, it was clear to him that there was a huge problem. One of the wards had a horribly high maternal mortality rate. It was the ward that was staffed by both physicians and medical students. Between 13 and 18 percent of all mothers giving birth were dying. The deaths were chalked up to what was called childbed fever or puerperal fever. Both of these terms were describing an illness that no one understood. At the time, dying by childbirth was of course much more common than it is today. But even by 1800 standards, this was high. By comparison, there was another ward at the maternity clinic in Vienna that was only seeing around 2% mortality in mothers. That ward was staffed by midwives. Semmelweis, nor anyone else at the clinic, could account for why there was such a huge discrepancy between these wards and their mortality rates. He started digging into it to figure out what was so different. They looked at the environment, the climate, the proximity to outside visitors, everything. The only thing that seemed to be different was that one ward was staffed by midwives, the other by physicians and students. The case was recalled in Semmelweis's book titled The Etiology, Concept, and Prophylaxis of Childbed Fever, where he writes, quote, Everything was in question. Everything seemed inexplicable. Everything was doubtful. Only the large number of deaths was an unquestionable reality, end quote. Even people outside the hospital were taking note. When women were admitted to the hospital in Vienna for childbirth, they dropped to their knees and begged to be placed in the ward with the midwives. The rate of mothers dying from this mysterious childbed fever was higher in the physician and student ward than it was when women gave birth outside of hospitals on the street. So why? Why was it becoming so common in this one ward? Finally, an accident that happened in the hospital caught the attention of Semmelweis. One of the doctors had been poked by a scalpel in his hand, and the scalpel had been used on an autopsy, and that doctor died with the same mysterious symptoms as these mothers in the birthing ward. This is when Ignaz Semmelweis experienced his light bulb moment. He realized 
The biggest difference between the ward with the physicians and students and the ward with the midwives was the kind of exposure that the staffers themselves were facing. The physicians and students were conducting autopsies and were learning on medical cadavers. They were working on these dead bodies with their bare hands and then immediately going to the maternity ward to deliver babies. They were essentially inoculating the mothers with bacteria from dead bodies. Meanwhile, the midwives working in the other ward weren't conducting autopsies or getting near cadavers. Remember, this was the 1840s. No one realized that the bodies contained bacteria. Louis Pasteur hadn't become a celebrity yet with his germ theory about bacteria. Nobody realized that the doctors were spreading disease. Semmelweis didn't use the term bacteria or germs. He concluded that the doctors were carrying around, quote, decaying animal organic matter, end quote, on their hands. He started an experiment inside the maternity ward. All staff attending patients were to wash their hands in a special chlorinated lime solution before touching pregnant mothers. And within one month, the maternal mortality dropped to just 1-2%. to It worked. Washing their hands made the death rate plummet to match that in the midwife's ward. Despite the clear evidence, Semmelweis's colleagues didn't believe that the hand washing had anything to do with it. The theory at the time was that disease spread through the air, not through contact. Their belief was that it was toxic odors that spread illness, so if there wasn't an overwhelming noxious smell, then it couldn't be disease. People did wash their hands back then, but it was usually only to get rid of smells, not to get rid of any sort of disease or bacteria. Another problem was that Semmelweis was in Austria and couldn't speak the language very well. He was a Hungarian, and so while he was able to communicate to his co-workers, he never provided his findings to larger academic crowds and medical conferences. It wasn't until 14 years later, in 1861, that he wrote his book about the subject. So for all those years, he was seen as sort of a quack doctor. And even after he wrote the book, he was still sort of seen as a quack doctor, which is crazy because he had the evidence, anecdotal as it was, from the Vienna hospital to back up his theory. There was another problem with Semmelweis. He just didn't handle it well when he wasn't taken seriously. The communication problems didn't end with the language differences. He went around publicly berating any doctor or official who didn't take his hand-washing theory seriously. He insulted them and blamed them for the deaths of anyone who died from childbed fever. Doctors, of course, didn't take kindly to one of their own blaming them for the deaths of patients, especially when those doctors were operating exactly as they had been taught their whole lives. He wasn't taken seriously by them because his experiments in handwashing were never presented in a formal scientific way, so he could never overcome the belief perseverance that was prevalent among the doctors. They simply didn't see enough to change their minds. Semmelweis was an obscure doctor in Vienna suggesting that these men, these doctors with high social standing, have unclean hands, and that was almost offensive to suggest. Frustrated in the middle of an Austria that was experiencing political turmoil, Ignaz Semmelweis left the Vienna hospital without saying a word to anyone and returned to Hungary. He published his book, which didn't sell well, and soon he descended into a dark depression and mental breakdown. He continued lashing out at his colleagues in the medical industry, calling them irresponsible murderers. And he began drinking heavily, staying away from his family, choosing the company of prostitutes instead. In 1865, Ignaz Semmelweis was committed to an insane asylum and placed in a straitjacket, a common practice for the time. He was beaten and abused, also not uncommon treatments for mental patients of the time. And two weeks after being admitted, a cut on his hand became infected and gangrenous, and Semmelweis died on August 13, 1865, at the age of 47. During his lifetime, Semmelweis's medical contributions were never appreciated or recognized. The maternity ward where he worked saw death rates increase again after he left. And it wasn't that long after his death that Louis Pasteur gained international recognition for presenting what he called his germ theory, that invisible bacteria lived among us and caused infection and disease. But even that theory was at first met with resistance and ridicule. Florence Nightingale, who was known best for her contributions to medicine through nursing, particularly nursing wounded soldiers, was a huge advocate for cleanliness and hand washing. She taught her nurses the importance of hygiene and sanitation. There's also some evidence that Boston physician Oliver Wendell Holmes was coming to the same conclusions about hand washing around that same time. 
and though he never saw it in real life, Ignaz Semmelweis is now celebrated as an innovator in medicine. He's seen as the father of handwashing, a pioneer of antiseptic policy. He's had hospitals and museums named after him, and perhaps most importantly for the future, a theory of education named for him. It's called the Semmelweis Reflex. It's described as a situation in which there is an almost reflex-like rejection of new knowledge just because it contradicts the norms and beliefs of the time. The internet says it's true. Now it's time for the part of the podcast where I call a friend and today I'm calling my good friend Jonathan Burns. I've been trying to get Jonathan back on the show for so long and we're both very busy people so it's been hard to to get him uh, on the show. I'm so lucky that uh, if you're not familiar with, with Jonathan, he's a, a flexible comedian. He does a little bit of contortion, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of magic and one of the funniest entertainers in the world. Um, he, he's been doing a lot of halftime shows for, for basketball games, which is super cool. Uh, what have you been up to this week, man? Good to see you. Sorry, just letting the applause die down. It's, it's funny because I can see you clapping your hands, but Zoom is not letting me hear it. Oh, no. It, yeah, Zoom has a weird it, it thing. Was, it was thunderous in here. I mean, <laughs> sit down, please, everybody. We. I'm just I, a man. I had this issue with, uh, I had Jonathan Pritchard on last week, and I was playing sounds, and he couldn't hear the sounds, because apparently Zoom only lets you really hear voices, so um, <sighs> it's weird. I don't, you know, there's got to be, there's, I'm sure there's a better technology for recording what these if, with guests. What if my what if my voice makes sounds like, hell, 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 <laughs> yes. do you hear that? I wonder if I was talking to someone that spoke a click language in Africa, if it would <laughs> yes. like bleep that out, or like, it would... That's, it would mute that that's true i was thinking more of the uh, michael winslow is the guy who makes the sounds <laughs> yeah. from police Academy. horrible on zoom meetings <laughs> <laughs> it's like he can't, we can't hear you michael he's like <laughs> <laughs> there's the thing on the audio where you can um you know you can turn off the original sound for musicians or whatever so i'm gonna try yeah, that. Yeah, i've yeah. just disabled Sometimes noise suppression okay give us a give us some applause let's see if we can hear you now Nope, it's still it's still completely. Oh wait, wait, okay. Here, wait. Let me try. Okay, turn off. Nope, I still got nothing. It's okay. It nothing? turns out we don't need applause for to make. I can. <sighs> I, I have fake applause. I have this. Yay! Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. It's perfect. It's uh, perfect. <laughs> all right. Well, what have you been up to? I know you've been super busy touring. Yes, uh, back to back to school stuff for schools, uh, family weekends at, at colleges, probably the same stuff that you're doing right now, but yeah. uh, all is well. I'm going to be on a transatlantic cruise with Disney Cruise Lines in a in a week. That's so that'll exciting. Be a, actually, sorry, not, not a transatlantic. I'm sorry. It's a the Panama Canal crossing. Ooh, I've not done be, that. That sounds really yeah. cool. I hear I hear it's pretty fun. Like you're, you're like the ship barely fits through the canal. Yeah. And then there's a bunch of there's a lock system. Yeah, uh, it sounds like it just takes down. forever. I I think I'm hoping like the little boy in me comes out, you know, like yeah. the guy who played with Tonka trucks and just wants to be like, oh, look at the ship go up and, you know, take lots of pictures, man. That's that's really neat. I know my wife's aunt um, talks all the time about when her and her uh, late husband cruised through the Panama Canal. It was like a, it was a formative memory for them. So that's oh, pretty nice. neat. Okay. Yeah, I just booked one that. uh this is like the craziest itinerary. Um, I'm going from Los Angeles to San Francisco to Seattle to Victoria to Vancouver. Or Va ah, Va Vancouver, yeah, Victoria. Up the so, coast. Yeah, it's getting crazy far away from the U.S. Just, yeah. <laughs> but the neat thing is, like you know, international phone calls. Like I'll be able to basically call. Alley the whole time I'll have self service I won't be right off yeah, the coast. Yeah, nice. Right so, off the coast. Well, I I think there's a rule about you have to go to a foreign port. There's some sort yeah, of like there's there a is. bunch of old like maritime law things that I always love hearing about. I know. And yeah, I've got another like, this one rule from the 1800s, and you're you know somebody can't come on halfway through the ship. Well, I did that transatlantic crossing with Carnival um, this summer, and it felt like our stop at Halifax was purely ceremonial. I mean, we. We went from Portugal to Halifax and like Halifax, we were only there. I think the they, the guests had to be back on the ship by like 4.30 p.m. or something. So it's hardly right. any time to you do anything. You got 20 minutes in Halifax. <laughs> yeah, just just sign this and say you were in Halifax. 
Kiss kiss a cod and get out of here. Kiss That's a like, cod. That's about all there is to do in Halifax. I wasn't impressed <laughs> with Halifax. And I'm sorry to my Nova Scotian listeners, but... Um, I, oh, the Maritimes are beautiful. I love Canada. I, I just found that... Okay, we didn't have enough... Maybe we just didn't have enough time. It's It was beautiful. There's just nothing to do. It was very kind of like touristy, the area where the where the ship was. I Plus, yeah. I spent half the day at a coffee shop checking emails so i can't really like i didn't get the full halifax <laughs> three experience. stars yeah halifax three stars. yeah internet um, speed no, was I... slow <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow take that halifax yeah but i am going back to halifax in uh i believe in like april so we'll see oh, nice well, maybe i'll get a little bit more time there it was yeah. also my show day when we were there so i wanted to get back on the ship a little sooner than for uh for a sound check and stuff so Anywho, yeah. uh yeah, last night I performed a uh, a private party in someone's home. I haven't done Oh nice. Yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. Uh Yeah, it's always weird like bringing your stuff into someone else's house and setting it up in their It was a living room situation? Yeah, yeah, living room. Yeah, right in front of the television. Um they they had screenshotted my homepage to my website and put it up on the TV during my show, so it was like a backdrop. Um hey. And the, it was re- actually it was really great. The, these folks were so kind, and they had hired me ten years prior for the woman's birthday then, and then remembered me to bring me back. And so I'm assuming in ten years I'll, I'll be going back as a um, I'll be I'll be fifty four at that point. <laughs> How old will she be? I'm not gonna say because oh, okay, uh, it's a you know I don't want to I don't know if it's public. You know, some people are weird about ages. I, I guess no one knows who this yeah. person is. Uh, it was yeah, a, that's true. it was a fifty year old birthday party, so it was forty. Oh, last time I was gonna there. You're going to hear about this. You're going to hear about this and about Halifax. Yeah, those are two. <laughs> all the hate mails coming from those getting two canceled places. from women in Halifax. From, especially, from, I'm that's getting gonna be the canceled majority. from one woman in Ohio and thirty <laughs> people that live in Halifax. <laughs> that's right. You know something about Halifax that I did find was was interesting. I was going to say it was neat, but it wasn't neat. In 1917, the whole city basically exploded. Um, the, there, there was a ship, uh, collision and one of them was like wow. a munitions ship and it just blew the whole town down. Like all of the that buildings is, were just gone. That is kind of a hollow fact. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that's pretty You good. can't hear the applause from my area. I, you I know, know the audio issues. I but. need to get after that joke. I need to, we need to get moving. Uh, so for this, <laughs> for this first question, we're going to play for a joke, Jonathan. Well, I would, I would like to say I, every time I've been on, I always try to pre-guess what the, what the, the thing is about. Oh, so okay. I study yes, one yes. thing. Okay. And, and this time I studied the music of Weezer. Okay. Cause I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get a question about Weezer. So this is going to, uh, you're going to be thoroughly shocked when I say that this episode has nothing to do with Weezer. What? So all of your facts, um, I'm happy to hear them, but all of your facts. Well, uh, after after each question, I, okay. I will also include a fact about Weezer. <laughs> Please do. For this question, we're going to play for a joke. Uh, so if you get it wrong, you got to tell me a joke. And if you get it right, I'll tell you a joke. Uh, and I already think I did with that hall of facts. When you did. You, oh, you're no. already up one. So if you don't have one, you're, you're fine. Uh, so uh, Ignaz Semmelweis was a 19th century Hungarian doctor that put forth a theory that was rejected by science until after his death. Which one of these was it? A, babies can hear from inside the womb. B, the body needs vitamins. Or C, washing hands prevents infection. All right, he was in Weezer in the mid-90s. I know that. <laughs> Ignaz uh, Semmelweis. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he, he played the... That was the, Rivers the Cuomo's birth name. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He, he shortened it to make it easier to spell. Um, what, I'm looking for the one that is true. Yeah, the, one of these is true. Either baby... He, this is... This, I mean... All three Dr. of these things. Edelweiss all these things. All, all three of these things are true. These are all true things. But but these are all true things. One of but which them, one did he do? Yeah, but and and it wasn't taken seriously. It was rejected by science until after he died. So either babies, I believe that babies can they can hear in the womb, and that was his finding. You think so? Yep. The answer is washing hands prevents infection. Uh, this dude, this dude was hand washing, uh, and and it was a whole maternity ward that was having horrible horrible mortality rates because the doctors that were delivering the babies were also doing autopsies 
and not mm. washing their hands oh. from one to the other. And meanwhile, that same maternity um, section of the hospital had a different ward with midwives who didn't do autopsies, and their mothers had a very low mortality rate. And so he was like, there's something on these folks' hands when they go. And he figured this out, and no one took him seriously. The guy ended up going crazy. They put him in, and he died in an insane asylum because he was so angry that no one took him seriously. Plus, he became like an alcoholic and stuff. Sort of a sad story at the end there. But yeah, uh, they he, after he died, you know, 20 years after he died, 30 years after he died, was when Louis Pasteur said came in and said like, hey, listen, this is real. Germs are a thing. We can't see them. Um, He's and, like, employees must wash hands. Yeah, yeah. But now he they he is credited with being the first person to say this publicly, even though wow. he wasn't in life. So... Uh, well, you can... did you know, did you know that <laughs> the video go. from the Weezer song Buddy Holly was secretly put on the Windows 95 CD-ROM without their knowledge? No, but part of me thinks I remember this being on there. They, uh, yeah, they had no idea it was on there. And later, I guess in an interview, they they were sort of mad about it at first because it was just secretly put on there, but then realized that all these people have their their music video on their computer. They were like the only video on their computer. Wow. The that, that That is like a thought that I can remember the thought of, remember doing shows and being kind of, it was weird that people were taking videos of the show. And then there was the switch over to like, well, no, that's a good thing. Because these folks, like some of them are going to post that video and then more people are going to see your, your act. Right. It switched over. So I can see that. Like at first they'd be like, wait a minute, we didn't get paid for this Windows 95 deal. But then yeah. also the exposure. It reminds me of when when Apple put U2 on all of the iPhones without our knowledge. <laughs> People are so angry. They were so angry. That is that is the only music on my wife's phone. And so every time she puts, <laughs> plugs in her phone or puts connects to Bluetooth, this U2 song comes on. She's like, it's I hate beautiful that. beautiful day. <laughs> it's not even that. It's like an obscure one. It so wasn't. Like, yeah. No. I, don't, I don't know any of the songs from that album. Did, have you seen any of the clips? We're going to get to your joke, by the way. We need we need a new joke from you. But okay. have we seen it? Have you seen any of the clips from the sphere? You two performed their their first shows in the sphere this weekend. Yeah, I, I, have oh, I have not. Oh, my I've... gosh. It's worth looking up on like TikTok. Look, just look up like, you know, you two sphere uh, and you will find it's cha- it's going to revolutionize uh, live shows. And these everyone's wow. going to come to Las Vegas to see a show in the sphere because the I'm they going. used the entire inside of well i think what it is is the concert venue is kind of half of it but you look up and they can control how high the ceiling appears by making the things at the top look like larger and look like a square and stuff and so they can make the venue look smaller than it actually is or bigger as big as the sphere wow. is high it's it's amazing some of these videos are just blowing me away um it makes the band look very very small um, unless I don't know if they broadcast the actual video of the you know live live feed of the band on the sphere, but yeah. it's worth looking up. It's incredible, and everyone's going to want to go see whoever is playing in the. I can just imagine some of the some of the acts that are already incredible uh, arena acts or stadium yeah. acts, like you know your your Beyonce's, Taylor Swift, Muse would be amazing because they always do great AV stuff anyway. So yeah, um, yeah, it was incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, do you have a joke? I mean, you got jokes, but what? Uh, what do dinosaurs eat? What do dinosaurs eat? Nothing, because they're dead. <laughs> I like that one. Thank you. I wasn't expecting it. That's uh, my daughter Lydia, who's seven, delivers it the best because she great. she she goes nothing because they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's her. That's her. <laughs> So she's she's told that joke to, like we had a waiter one time that kept telling us jokes and she yeah, told him that one. That's good. <laughs> and that was she was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it learns from daddy. It's all in the delivery. I did. I did look up a joke that uh, I'm good. Even though you got the question wrong, I'm going to tell you the joke because the joke is specific to this story. Uh, here's a joke. A paramecium and an amoeba are walking down the street and the amoeba asks, so lacking any pseudopodia, how do you manage to get around? And the paramecium replies, a silly uh, question I have never heard. That's one for our scientists out there. See, the cilia are the hair-like um, protrusions from the amoeba, or the paramecium, that helps it move. Um, it's a, it's and you know, you know how you get rid of them? 
what you wash your hands you wash your hands yeah thanks for connecting the dots for our listeners <laughs> synergy love it love it uh yeah so have you been have you visited anywhere awesome lately any cool cities i was just in milwaukee i like milwaukee i was just there briefly but it was the thing that made me laugh is uh, we were talking earlier about headphones i i was on the plane and there was a screaming toddler which i i as a dad i, I feel for those people i've been sure. in that situation where they're just like they don't want to do anything and so we're like on the plane this kid is going off for like five ten 20 minutes you know i don't want to go I don't, you know like just freaking yeah. out and uh they were like we're gonna go see the cheese heads he's like i don't want to see the cheese heads <laughs> <laughs> what a weird um, thing to say to the child though like i know it was like that was that was like, gonna be a highlight of their trip we're gonna <laughs> see the cheese heads were they he, he was not interested were they but talking about literal citizens of milwaukee like literal wisconsinites or were they talking <laughs> about like those hats that you can buy the foam cheese there hats? wasn't there wasn't more, uh, there no wasn't context. any follow up to it. <laughs> so I just heard that and it made me laugh. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. I was in uh, Baltimore the day before mm-hmm. yesterday. And then uh, I woke up in the morning. Well, Charm I was looking. Yeah, Charm City. I, I only knew that because I performed uh, the Baltimore Comedy Festival one year, which was called the Charm City Comedy Festival. Um, I never looked into why it's called that. There are parts of it that have no charm, in fact, um, but because I've seen The Wire. And, yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> there are, but there are very it charming parts. Your perspective. Every time my GPS takes me anywhere in Baltimore, it routes me through the downtown area where the stadiums are. And I don't know if there's a way around that. I should look into it, but I always think of about it too late. And I'm like, oh, it's taking me through like, and there was a there was a Orioles game happening. Like people, were, it was so crowded just to get to the other side of town. I really need to learn it's, about a Baltimore uh, outer, is, outer there belt. There is a loop that goes around there. But uh, yeah, I've, I've done the same thing too. Sometimes yeah. you have to go through. I'm, like, my, there's, I'm one, sure. I fly, I fly in and out of Baltimore a lot. And yeah. one time I was looking for my gate at the at the airport. I couldn't find it going back to Baltimore. And I looked over and I saw this this man dressed in a beautiful suit. And I looked and I saw his face and it was John Waters who lives in Baltimore. What? Uh, really? And I was like, oh, that's my gate. <laughs> that oh, was, it was so convenient. Amazing. It was like, okay, good. John Waters is there. That's that's where I'm I would find John Waters incredibly in, like incredibly intimidating. To, to I be. yeah, I I didn't interact with him at all, but I let him do his thing, and I just knew that he's a Baltimore hero. I didn't know that. I didn't know he was a Baltimore going. guy. Was he and dressed he immaculately? There. He was like beautiful suit. He must be getting kind of old, right? With a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> is he is he up there in age now? I think so. He may have just got his a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I think. Wow. Um, yeah, he's probably. When you were looking for your it. gate, did they route you through the stadiums in the downtown? Like, did <laughs> they you have did. to go by they the did. Inner Harbor to get to your gate? I don't want to see the cheeseheads. I <laughs> okay. For this next question, we're playing for a story about something embarrassing that has happened to you, or something that you've been a part of that was somewhat embarrassing. Uh, scientists say which one of these frequently holds the most germs is it a your cell phone b your toilet or c your kitchen counter okay we're looking for the most the most germs i feel like rich rosen that guy on the news that kind of ruins everything and talks you know he goes and finds out like how many germs are on the subway and different places not, uh not familiar i have no idea what you're talking about right now <laughs> all right cut cut that all out wait no um, i'm gonna google rich rosen now obviously. rich rosen rich rose uh, i'm gonna say your cell phone the answer believe it or not is the cell phone yes 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 your cell phone has uh many more germs than the average toilet um and the reason behind that of course we don't wash our cell phones like we wash our toilet. Um, so your cell phone just sit, collects those things and it's disgusting. And uh, Allie and I have, she has, we have those like UV ray cleaning phone things. It's like a little coffin, oh, okay. a little coffin for your phone. You put it in there and it you charge your phone while you're doing it too. You know, in 10 minutes it comes out. Apparently, anti. I didn't, I don't know how UV kills bacteria. That's above my education level. But then she's got one at her spa for, for her folks, too, uh, so they can get their phone out of their hands for while, while they're getting a facial wow. or whatever. So, yeah, 
Yeah, my phone uh, could use a cleaning right about now after being on airplanes. And airplanes are just the dirtiest. They're just the dirtiest place in the world. And I see people touching their face and everything else. It's just gross. Yeah. Yeah. I Yeah. I just saw a video of from Tom Papa, the comedian. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. always traveling. And there was a guy in first class. Uh, feet, shoes off, feet against the bulkhead. Not okay. Feet. Not okay. Not okay. Oh, yeah. God. I was like, that guy should be not in first class, but in worst class. Am We're, I right, what? guys? Hey, put Hello. him on the no-fly list. Hey, now. Um, gosh, okay. I owe you a, an embarrassing story. Uh, so this is one that I've not talked about. I've told a lot of these on the on the show. Um we in high school i was you know i was in the marching band in high school and in college played the drums and in high school we did what we called a senior show now there were maybe 35 people in my high school marching band and the senior show was up to the senior class to choose the music and design the drills on the field and we decided okay. like we were going to do one song from like three decades so we did like 60s 70s 80s or no, 70s, 80s, 90s, I think is what we did. You know, I graduated in the like, 90s. Like my favorite radio stations. 70s, 80s, and 90s. Coming at you. Uh, 70s, we chose... Um, oh, God. I don't even remember what the songs were. I know one of them was maybe like Time Warp. And one of them was <laughs> the 80s. The 80s song was uh, Tears and... Or the 90s song was Tears in Heaven. <laughs> Eric Clapton. Because we were like, oh, it's our senior show. It's going to be sad. And I don't remember what else there was. Oh, I remember what it was. Dude looks like a lady. And this links into my embarrassing story. I thought it would be funny for dude looks like a lady that uh, one of us dressed like a woman. And I decided that was going to be me. So in true magician form, um, we had some people hold up a sheet while I transformed into a woman uh, on the middle of the football field balloons in the shirt wig and then for the second half of the on the key change i was i I was uncovered and ran around the field bouncing my balloons around um ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and illegal in florida right now so (laughs) i don't think aerosmith can even perform that song there anymore no i mean really tennessee you can't don't even think about it don't it's that's considered like, I guess it was considered drag. So soon to be in Ohio, I probably wouldn't be able to do that. But Oh, no. Yeah, you know, look out for the kids. There's a senior in high school running around with balloons in his shirt. Bad hey. news. There is a video of that somewhere, and if I find it, I'll put it on the Patreon. Um, I'll look for that. <laughs> I'll digitize it. It's a VHS somewhere, and it's super embarrassing. But, like, I'll, I'll make an effort to look for that and put it on the Patreon for y'all. Please, please. Uh, those people, they're paying they're paying good money for that. Yeah. As as much as one dollar a month. So Oh my goodness. Absolutely. We got some good 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 patrons that uh that pay attention and, and to all the stuff I post there and watch the videos and I love it. I absolutely love that uh, you know, you become part of a community and you can chat with each other and stuff. I think it's neat. That's very cool. Well, I don't know if you know this, but uh after f- five weeks of forming the band Weezer, uh, they're they're opening <laughs> they're opening uh, debut was opening for a band called Dog Star, which is Keanu Reeves's band. Yeah, in Los Angeles. Dog Star. Wow, that was their first gig. I I would have never. I feel like Dog Star. I would have guessed is a newer thing than Weezer. I would have never guessed that Dog guess, Star was already big by the time Weezer came around. I, th- I think that yeah, it seems like it. I think it was 1992. Yeah, and now. Ask 10 people on the street who Dog Star is. And uh, maybe one of them, two of them know that that's Keanu's band. I, I don't think I've ever heard Dog Star. I know Keanu Reeves, but I've never actually Star. heard the, their music, but I, I've known the, you know, that Keanu Reeves had this band. Uh, so, yeah. I love it when celebrities have bands and then they try to be taken seriously as musicians. Did you ever see the Billy Bob Thornton radio interview where he went on to talk about his band? And instead, they wanted to talk about his acting career, and he got mad and stormed off because because the producers were told not to ask about acting. This was only about the band. Wow, it's worth. I have not up. seen that, but it feels very bo- Billy. It feels <laughs> like it's on brand. It is, yeah. No, he gets pissed. He's like, I specifically, your producers were told not to talk about, and they're like, well, we, <laughs> the listeners know who your band is because you're a famous actor. 
you right. know, like that. That's why you were here. It's adding context, and you know these these act. Who who else has bands? I feel like there are a lot. Yeah, uh, the Bacon Brothers. Yeah, Kevin yes. Bacon's got a band. Yeah, you know how Sparks has a band. Uh, that's a uh, it's called Nerd Halen. It's like a Van Halen cover band where they dress as nerds. <laughs> uh, and it's great. <laughs> I always see clips of it. Hal and the Sparks. I Hal feel like that could and be a the band. Sparks could be a thing. Uh, yeah. All right, let's move on. We're going to play for a sticker for question number three. It's three inches square and sticky. Uh, According to the Cleveland Clinic, cold germs have uh, lived on hard surfaces or can live on hard surfaces for 24 to 48 hours. How long do those cold germs live on your hands? uh, I need to give you some options here. A, four to six days. B, 12 to 24 hours. Or C, one hour. So again, these are cold germs, like cold causing germs. I'm going to go one hour. The answer is one hour. The Cleveland mm. Clinic's, the Cleveland Clinic's uh, advice, they say that cold germs can live on our hands for up to about an hour, while E. coli and salmonella can only live on your hands live for about 20 minutes. So, wow. you know, if you found yourself uh cleaning that thanksgiving turkey and you've got dirty hands don't go and wash them just stand there for 20 minutes just wait <laughs> just wait with your hands like i don't know what to do just wait that's for actually minutes. how i make a hand turkey uh, <laughs> yes a hand turkey you hold them up trace around it just don't touch that paper for a while it's, it's got it's got real salmonella yeah it's an accurate very depiction accurate. Of, a, of a turkey uh what's new for you what what are you working on anything anything exciting uh, what am I working on? I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm always working on new stuff. I always like writing down silly ideas that come to me and, and just trying to find, uh, you know, just trying to be funnier. That's kind of my, my main goal. How often do you change your act? Uh, every show is a little different. I I feel like you probably are the same way where like sure. things are tiny, a little tiny changes each time. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's always changing. I guess my, my latest uh, thing that I've been working on is facts about the band Weezer. For instance, <laughs> oh, did you know that the front man Rivers Cuomo, uh, he went to Harvard between the Blue Album and Pinkerton, but he didn't tell any of his cl- classmates. And he actually applied to the university after a sound check in a nearby venue. Wow. No, I didn't. I didn't know that. And that is actually actually fascinating. I think I knew he went to Harvard. Uh, I think I thought multiple of guys in the band did, but maybe it's just him. Uh, Possibly, I, he yeah, he did it like on a whim, like it was after you know that's crazy. The sweater song and Buddy Holly, like he went over there, just stopped by after a sound check and applied. Do you remember Harvard. that one time we were having a drink with Wacky Chad, our our friend Wacky Chad, and he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah when I'm in was. between stuff, I just go and fly an airplane." Yeah, he, he was, was like, taking, a, yeah, during during a layover, he yeah, gets his he, flight hours, and he so was he taking pilot like tra- pilot lessons during layovers. I think Wacky that's Chad the Chad is the Rivers thing. Cuomo of the comedy variety world. Yes, yes, Wacky Chad. You've heard it here. Wacky Chad's actually really cool. He's a super nice, fascinating guy. guy. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine applying to it. Like, oh, sound check's over. What are you guys gonna do? I'm gonna go grab a sandwich. I'm gonna go apply to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. And he got in. Obviously, he's a smart and he got dude. In. Yeah. There's a lot of like pretty like literary deep meanings in their lyrics. A lot of allusions to historical stories that I've found. One of Absolutely. them, one of them um, I just found the other day and I can't remember what it is. So this was an amazing story that I just told. Uh, I'll look it up and I'll find there was a, hold on. I'm just going to Google it now. Weezer song. Uh, Tribute to history. Maybe we'll look for that and see what we got. It's it's a uh, okay. Well, I have no idea. And if you know that and you're listening, just let me know. Tell me in the comments. Uh, send me an email because I was doing. I was I was researching for a story for this podcast, and then you know, in the bottom of the Wikipedia article, sometimes it'll be like popular culture references. And that was sure. it. It was like Weezer wrote a song about this, blah blah blah. And then I went and I listened to the song, and in the first like, the first uh, stanza or whatever is about this guy, and then the nothing else in the in the song was. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, uh, I, yeah. 
So let's move on. Question four. We're going to play for our favorite health tip. Um, and this can be while you're traveling or just in general. You've got kids. You got, you know, you might have some routines or, or things that you do to stay healthy. According to research done by the Federal Center for Disease Control, what percentage of men don't wash their hands after using the restroom? Is it A, 15%, B, 2%, or C, 50%? Hmm. I feel like I've done research on this in my, my whole life. Yes. Um, I'm going to say 50% of men do not wash their hands after using the restroom. Well, you'll be happy to hear that it's 15%. Uh, just 15% of men don't wash their hands. Uh, sometimes it seems like fifty percent. I was I told a not, story. Yeah, not at a uh, a gas station I stopped at recently. I had the same like... experience. I was in Pennsylvania. I told this story at the top of the podcast, but I I was in Pennsylvania, and um, it was just one urinal, so I had to stand there and wait for the urinal. But it wasn't a single bathroom. You know what I mean? It wasn't the kind where like one person goes in and locks the door. It was a big enough bathroom where I could have gone and used the stall, but I didn't. Right. I waited for the urinal. And the guy finished what he was doing, and he just walked out. And then he started perusing the store. Like, when I was out there, he was still going through the store, picking up things and putting them down. Looking through like, racks of shirts, <laughs> touching yes. everything. <laughs> just touching everything. <laughs> no, I don't want this Pepsi. I want this Pepsi. No, that Pepsi. I don't want that one. I want th- Maybe this one's colder. I'm gonna, oh, no, I want water. <laughs> the Twinkies in the back are the fresh ones. That's yeah. <laughs> they yeah. put the old ones up front. Oh, my gosh. Disgusting. He 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 was uh, reaching in and checking the hot dogs on the rollers just to see which one was done the most. <laughs> Putting them back. Wow. Oh man. Not good. Uh, so this is interesting. Fifteen percent of men were found to not wash their hands after using the restroom, and in women that number drops to half. Seven percent of women don't wash their hands after using the restroom, according wow. to the the Center for Disease Control. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. That is very gross. What's your? Do you have a health? I, tip? I want. I wonder if that number is actually higher. It seems like something that they'd ask you, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I wash my hand." Like there's <laughs> yeah, only 15 percent of guys who actually admit it. I didn't look. This was a like a clinical study or whatever, and I did not look into how it was conducted. Whether it was uh like observe observing people that seems a little unethical. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah it's, it seems bathroom. like this is just yeah it has to we, be we'll self reported for it. Right, it has to be. It has to be. Do you have a, a favorite health tip? For, while traveling? No, just in, in general. Or just in general. Yeah. In general, uh, health tip. I Well, I'm going to talk to 15% of the men out there. Uh, <laughs> Please, wash do. Please, Please do. Wash your hands. Please wash your hands. It doesn't take that long. And, uh, you know, you're going to help. You're going to help everyone out. And and ladies love it. So your daughters are, are what, 7 and 10? 7 and 11? Seven and ten. Yeah. Seven and ten. And do you have trouble with them washing their hands? Is that a thing that's hard to teach kids to do? Uh no. My wife's like always, always on top of it. She's a big proponent. Well, she's a of teacher, so hands. that's like he's you know, she she probably her, encounters most that of a her lot. day is like, okay, wash your hands, yeah. you know, snack time, <laughs> wash your hands, sure. we're going outside, wash your hands, we're going to lunch. So uh she's got you know, she's got different scents of uh hand sanitizer in her purse at any given time. So yeah. Yeah. And even actually my kids even have like a they have like a, a little hand sanitizer dispenser on their lunchbox. Well, that's cool. You know, it'll be like, yeah, it'll be like a fun shape that didn't, didn't have that for us. But it's like yeah. a lot of, you know, get that's it. Nice. And, and it's worth the dirt, as they say. If mom forgets to pack the ranch dressing, you just open up your sandwich and just a little, <laughs> just a little, <laughs> a little <laughs> lemon scented <laughs> cleanness, lemon scented right. cleanliness in that sandwich. Pretty great. Yeah, the squirt, squirt the dirt is a big is a big phrase around school squirt the dirt squirt the dirt <laughs> that sounds like the name of a stand-up comedian in that you that you encountered in philadelphia during an open squirt mic the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about that uh okay so um i do you have one that's specific to travel um a travel a travel health tip yeah uh i have been let me see i'm trying to think of a good health tip uh, I I I mean I I do kind of when I travel a lot I do swear by the vitamin like emergency packets. Oh, do you so still? I, do use I those, used to do that I a lot, and I lot. got out of it. I I haven't done it. Maybe I should. 
they're not as they're not super convenient because you do have like you know if you're gone for a long time you got a whole bag of like these little bags but yeah. uh i do i do i feel like i've talked to several people who use them on a regular basis that that say that they're not you know they they don't get sick as much I need to get back into those. I used to always have a bunch of those in my bag. And then, you know, I've always got bottles of water with me and it's easy to just throw that in there. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's nice. I, I, and I do a little bit of water. I feel like I can't do a lot of, you know, sometimes people, they, they recommended amount is a lot, but I just do a little bit more Oh, flavor. a little bit of water with the, oh, I see what you're saying with the emergency packet. Yeah. 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 I don't, if you put it into a full bottle of water, it's too watered down. It does not taste good. So I generally yeah. wait until the bottle's about half. That's, that's mm. from, in my yeah, taste, I would I would even go less. Like I did it last night. I had a cup, like a glass of water. It was about like, an inch. Like of you're water gargling with, salt water, like, just a little bit of hot water yeah, emergency. And you know, <laughs> yeah, I think too much. Yeah, it's not going to taste very good. So at least you get a bit of you know flavor. You super orange, pal. Super orange is the only kind I've I'll ever had. I I have yeah. a couple things. Number one, uh, after every leg of a flight, you get to the city, you go to the bathroom, wash your hands immediately when you get there. Um, I do that religiously. And the other thing is I try to drink one bottle of water per flight. Mm. Um, you know, I'm not taking any flights less than an hour, so it's not crazy to drink one bottle of water during an hour because the, right. the number one way to get your sinuses screwed up is dryness and airlines are just horrible for, you know, and they're just very, very dry air. So same with hotel rooms, really hotel rooms can be very dry. So, yeah, just yeah. I pump the water. Well, I I like a window seat, and I, if I drink a whole bottle of water, I'm gonna get up at some point during that uh, flight, see, and I always have to disturb multiple people. But. Yeah, that's a concern. If I'm taking a, a flight that's more than like two or three hours, then I definitely will try to get an aisle uh, seat for that reason. But otherwise, mm -hmm. I always am on the window, and I never use the restroom on the plane for those one or two hour flights. Yeah, I I, I like a window. I can sleep against it. Although yes. I'm, you've seen me fall asleep in public, and my mouth's hanging open. I'm like. <laughs> I'm all over people, so I have, I have, I have to this. lean up against something. Otherwise, it's not going to be, you know, I'm going to be a meme on the internet. Yeah, I snore really bad, and I so I I've stopped sleeping on airplanes because I'm just self conscious about it. Oof. Uh, it's the only reason I liked the pandemic flying when you had to wear a mask because then no one knew it was me. Yes, I it kept kept my mouth closed too. So sometimes <laughs> I just throw it on just to hold the mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you look like you could just get a grab a strap. It looked like Jacob Marley. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In it's life, like, I was your partner. <laughs> it's like when when like a, someone has a toothache in a in a cartoon. You mean like that? <laughs> yes. What was the point of that? Why would they Why would they always <laughs> wear that for a toothache in a cartoon? That has to have know. some I'm... sort of historical relevance, right? I feel like the next internet says it's true. We're Maybe I'll look into it. that. Why was yeah? We'll we'll do that. Okay. Last question. I, mean, I was going to say it could be that, or it could be that the title of El Scorcho, uh, <laughs> a Weezer song, is a reference to Del Scorcho, the hot sauce available in little packets at Del Taco Chain. At Del Taco, yes, yes. I did not know that one, but I really liked that album. It wasn't one of their best, like most popular albums. Didn't do as well as like the what is it, the Blue Album or the Green Album or whatever it is. Yeah, but Pinkerton. Yeah, Pinkerton sure. was a great album. Great album. Yeah. Well, I did you know this? that Weezer took a four-year hiatus after the release of Pinkerton. And during their hiatus, they played small shows featuring all Nirvana and Oasis covers under the pseudonym Goat Punishment. What? That cannot be true. You made that one it, up. <laughs> uh, look it up, Michael Kent. <laughs> You're good at that. Unbelievable. That, uh, that's an incredible factoid. Uh, Goat Punishment. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just a Weezer cover band. Now, you do, you've done uh you you went two for four you're you're batting five hundred here and the last questions for all the marbles so if you get it right you're welcome back on the podcast anytime if you get it wrong you're banned for life which is oh fine because it's really... well will you send me the marbles will you send me the marbles <laughs> I will send way. you the marbles if you get it right <laughs> the oh, hero no. okay. of our story Ignatz Semmelweis became angry when his medical ideas weren't accepted he ended up dying in a mental institution because of all of it. If you, Jonathan Burns, ended up the same way in your life, what was the thing that put you there? What was the thing that put you over the edge that society drove you into a into maybe a life of, of destitution or whatever? 
You know what it was? What was that? It was those 15% of men who don't wash their hands. After you <laughs> the, the 15% of men. It's enough to, uh, enough to get you going. Yeah, I was, I was pretty worked up. I was pretty fired up and I was about to, I was trying to get a snack at this little gas station where this dude did this. And I ended up just leaving. I was like, I'm not getting any of these snacks. I'm, and I, I think I went to the next exit. And I got snacks there. <laughs> Wow, that would, yeah, that did that almost put you into a mental institution. Wow, my, my new road snacks that I'm addicted to are takis, uh, fuego, <laughs> the little my, corn rolls. My kids, my kids want those. I think they, I, they've never, they don't like anything spicy. Oh, they would hate these. Like, they were just like, no, we want them. I think because kids on the on YouTube talk about them. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, what, it's pretty popular with kids. But there's something in it. I don't know if it's the the citric acid or so, there's something in it that makes me crave them. I'm just like, I need more mm. of these. Uh, so, well, I, well, I have one more thing to tell you. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. I didn't know. I don't know if you've heard this or not, but there's a conspiracy theory out there that uh, people believe that Kurt Cobain is still alive, and he is hiding under the identity of Rivers Cuomo, the front man for for Weezer. No, that's it's not even believable. Well, well, listen to this. Okay, yeah, uh, I want to hear why people believe this because they don't look anything alike. First of all. Well, think. both Cobain and, and Cuomo have reservations about fame. Their guitar <laughs> sound is similar. They're they're almost the same age, and they kind of resemble each other. I don't Weezer believe formed, any of those. Maybe the fact that they're almost the same age is the only one that I'm on board with here. Well, this is they said Weezer was formed in 1992 when Nirvana was falling apart. Nirvana <laughs> and Weezer tour dates and shows never crossed over or conflicted with each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> that uh, is Weezer's crazy. debut album was produced by uh, Rick Okasik, the lead singer for the Cars, yeah. who was a known friend of Cobain's. Yeah, wrote Rick Okasik. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they did the cover songs with Goat Punishment, and uh, to de- to this day, there's no photographic evidence of confirming of Kurt Cobain's dead or. More importantly, that he died the way the police police reports claim. Now that part, I, I watched the. <laughs> you've got to print out the internet. The internet says it's true. Uh, that part I did. Uh, I did watch the documentary um, that posits that Courtney Love was behind uh, Kurt's demise. Um, mm. But I have some facts for you now. These are also bands established in 1992 that could be okay. Kurt Cobain in disguise. Uh, Blink 182, mm-hmm. uh, Bush. There's no way Bush was established in 1992. Is that right? I feel like they were big at the same time. Metallica or I'm Metallica, uh, Nirvana. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find these uh, the people that they've heard of these bands. Uh, none of these are. Those are the only two that I see that. Oh, G Love in the Special Sauce could be Kurt Cobain <laughs> in the Special good. Sauce. Harvey Danger. Oh, okay. Flagpole yeah. Sitta. I remember that song. Yeah, Harvey Danger. Fam- uh, f- favorite band of our friend Glenn Tickle. Um, <laughs> he looks like Harvey Danger. <laughs> Jamiroquai could be Kurt Cobain. Uh, <laughs> formed Similar in 1992. Dance moves. I can see that. Uh, less Than Jake. So there you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not a Surf. Kurt Cobain, if he was dead, couldn't surf. So not a surf not could be a... an illusion to, um, let's see, P.O.D., <laughs> Real Big Fish, <laughs> Silver Chair, Sixpence None the Richer. Uh, these are all bands formed in 1992. Wow. Uh, Three Days Grace and Veruca Salt. Um, finally, that is also my, my recently played list on, <laughs> this, on my phone. This can't be right. Uh the last one I see on this list is Wu Tang Clan. They have to be older than 1992, maybe not. But uh, I just want you to know that if that is true, and Kurt Cobain did somehow join the Wu Tang Clan, uh, Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with. So you definitely <laughs> leave them alone. Leave them alone. Uh, okay, dude. It's it's been awesome having you back on. Uh, go go to uh, iHeartBurns.com. It's iHeartBurns. It's a it's a funny little pun. Uh, iHeartBurns.com. That to, is my fan club. To, um, to, to join Jonathan's fan club. You can be a part of it. That's right. 
Yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah, don't go to heart, heartburn.com. That's that's for Tums. <laughs> Is that real? Does Tums own heartburn.com? <laughs> I think it's either them or Prilosec OTC. Oh, that's, that's I'm not brilliant. sure. brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, maybe you can work out some sort of cross promotion there. I hope so. <laughs> Dude, uh, so good Tums to see money. you. So good to see you. And uh, I hope to get you back on here again soon, man. Yeah, I hope to see you in person. Yeah, Houston. We're going to be in Houston. Uh, we're, we're not, we're, we, don't, we don't overlap in Houston, right? I don't think so. Two weeks. I don't know. I think you're there. I think you're in Houston the day before I am. So. Mm, Yeah, I think I'm there the first day. You're you're the second day. I'm there the second day. Yeah, because I, I was supposed to be on the first day, and then I had a double booking. I I had a show that I wasn't on my calendar. So. Too popular. Too Too popular. popular. All right, Jonathan. See you later. <laughs> Wait, should I, should I, should I, I have a sign off? I usually I usually end on a guest sign off. So, Jonathan, okay. I'll see you later. Flip those pancakes when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for this week. Thank you so much to Jonathan Burns for being my guest, and thanks to you all for listening. Here is the voice of a tiny germ. Thank you for listening to the Internet Says It's True. To listen to episodes ad-free and a week early, support us on Patreon. You can do that at patreon.com forward slash Michael Kent. If you learned something just now that you didn't already know, go to the Apple Podcast app and leave us a review with five stars and a few words. That helps us a ton, because that's how the algorithm works. I don't know what an algorithm is, but just do it! See you next week for a brand new episode of... The Internet Says It's True! The Internet Says It's True would like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions help to make this show possible. Sean Brown, Joshua Endress, Dallas Ray, Bryce Swanson, Eugene Anderson, Jim and Joanne Martin, Mitch and Andrew Joseph Kemplin, and the show's official emperor, Kick Track. The show is written and produced by me, Michael Kent. The theme song is by Finite Music Forge, and all audio clips in this episode are used for education and commentary and used under Fair Use Title 17 USC Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. 